And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to start off with a little side project that um, we had a lot of comments suggesting this. On our last episode, we put in a heat transfer little pipe here. This runs steam all the way to the end of this, out to the very edge where it's nice and warm, and then brings back a whole bunch of hot steam through a vacuum, which we dump into our little our water desalinator such polluted water cleanser, which is, yes, a totally overkill, I get it. But this also helps us solidify the entire magma biome, which has been kind of fun. However, it's been pointed out, there's a better way of doing this. I've been using steam, and that's pretty good, but what if we put in conveyor rails and just ran 20 kilos of mass along there, say diamond or something like that. We, we can figure that out exactly what we're going to use in a minute, but that means we can just use shipping rails. Now, we don't want them to melt, of course, so we'll probably have to make something a little expensive. How about steel? <laughs> we're going to use God knows how much steel. Well, we've got 170 tons of this stuff. We should be fine. Eh, right to about there. Now, on the return journey, we'll just bring it along the bottom, I think. Uh, that's still... Uh, yeah, we're, we're down to 160 tons. It's fine. This might take a few minutes to build. These things require mechatronics engineers to be produced, and I'm not sure we have that money left on the planet. I sent one of our rockets back to uh, our other place. We'll, we'll see how long this takes. And it's done. We have this whole conveyor rail system going all the way around so that it can uh, conveniently just rotate materials around it. Then comes the million dollar question. What do we actually put on the rails? This gets really interesting because you can pretty much put anything, anything that will stay solid at temperatures up to uh, about 13, 1400 degrees, so say 1400 degrees. That gives you a massive range of materials to choose from and it gets really confusing. So if we go up here, let's say, I've basically laid out all of the major building block materials. So you've got your sandstone here and that, all we really care about is the specific heat capacity, how much heat it can hold. So 0.8 is actually eh, not that great, but compared to say igneous rock, which has a, a specific heat capacity of one, that means Igneous rock would be better, also it wouldn't melt, unlike sandstone. Then you got all of these granite, weaker, 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 obsidian, ceramic. Ceramic's actually interesting, but no, all of those. So the igneous rock would be the best of all the rock types. Then you get to the ores, the metal ores, and believe me, there's so many options here. None of these are really great, but they do have better thermal conductivity, which means they should be able to transfer heat better. Uh, steel probably is one of the standout ones. It's, well, it's got good heat, it won't melt, and it's got sp good specific heat capacity. The only one that really beats it, though, is diamond much better, well, a little bit better specific heat capacity and a thermal conductivity of 80. And then you've got your copper, your lead, all these ones, they're not really that good. Cobalt's not too bad, but it's still behind diamond. But it gets really interesting when you start thinking, you can put anything. So for example, refined carbon has a specific heat capacity of 1.7 and has, well, okay, its thermal conductivity is terrible, but I'd like to give this a shot just to see. I'd like to sort of try a couple of materials and just find out which one's best. So we're going to give diamond a roll first, and then we're going to try refined carbon afterwards. I mean, why not? We might as well do a little bit of experimentation because this is our first time doing it. So all we'll do is we'll set this to allow manual use and chuck in some refined carbon. When I said you could put anything in here, I meant anything. So refined carbon is fine, but just say you wanted something else, you could put in critter eggs. You could rotate critter eggs around here if you thought they had a better chance of doing it. You could rotate around food, seeds, anything at all, whatever has the best properties for it. It's kind of mm, way too many options. I prefer it was a little bit more limited so I didn't have so many things to think about. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll give this refined carbon a spin and see how it works out. So there goes the refined carbon across the line. That's going to, yeah, it's going to drain a little bit of heat to start once we until we fill the loop. But once the loop is filled, that should be grand. I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to take, but we'll give this a spin for a few cycles and see what it does. And then we'll give diamond to go. The difference between diamond and the refined carbon will be refined carbon has a much better, uh, well, thermal capacity. For example, if we grab a piece of it here, nope, it's all gone. God damn it. Refined carbon has a higher specific heat capacity, about, uh, about three times that of diamond, but its thermal conductivity is terrible. So it depends how well it conducts heat. If it conducts heat really well, or if it conducts heat well enough while in the conveyor rails, which usually give a boost or used to, but I think that's been modded. Well, we'll have to see. But assuming this can get up to even 100 degrees of the max temperature here at the end, it should be far better at diamond at moving temperature because it could just carry more of it. And that is, yeah, that looks like it's definitely going to be hitting about 11, 1200. Yeah. And you got to remember, this is its first rotation round. I'm thinking that's going to be very, very good for heat transfer. Then down here, we've got these radiant gas pipes. They're still going along just fine. Let's see how quickly we can eat through the end of this... Uh, this magma biome. This is, this is way too good. Look at the temperature there. It's 427 degrees on that tile. I have been 
This tile's been about 400 degrees for ages now, and we've managed to raise the temperature of it by 30 degrees in it, less than a cycle. This stuff is amazing. Uh, yeah, I should have been messing around with gas pipes. This is just so much more heat transfer. Uh, we're just getting the last of the refined carbon on there before it's eventually going to be one continuous segment, so it's going to be a little bit slow while that stuff heats up and comes on the line, but I think we're just about good, are we? Yeah, it goes all the way to the end. Yeah, we're fully topped. You know what? Get rid of that. Done. Now let's give this a cycle. Are we at 1570? Yeah, let's give it to uh let's give it a cycle and see how much better we can get than 435 degrees. 673 and rising. Wow. Just yep. Uh I was an idiot. That whole gas piping thing, don't bother. Gas, no. Liquids, no, 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 no. Just uh, a conveyor rail, assuming it's going through diamond, of course. A conveyor rail of refined carbon, it seems, can just move ridiculous amounts of heat. <laughs> 674. Hasn't been this hot in God knows how long. In fact, I think our, uh, our steam room up here is up to 180 degrees again. We dropped down below the 180 degree mark because we couldn't extract heat fast enough, but now we are... Yeah, we're back on top. Perfect. In fact, I'm thinking we're going to run a second one just over here to, to drain the heat out of this section. I really should point out though, um, yeah, how fast is this moving heat is really hard to get across. But let's just say, look at these tiles here, they're 1229 degrees. And then you look at the magma beside it, it's 1400. The magma does not actually transfer heat very well with igneous rock. So the moment you solidify some of the magma, you just drain the heat out of it so rapidly. It'll go from say 14, I think it's about 1406C and change. Once it hits about that, it'll solidify and then the heat just gets sucked out of it rapidly. But you notice here, this is a 1407, 1407 and it just slowly goes up all the way across. We're not just draining one degree out of heat out of the uh, adjacent magma. We're draining a degree of heat across this entire pool all the way along. In fact, we're draining heat about one degree of it all the way across. That's why it's so slow. But yeah, this, this, this definitely helps. Oh my God. Uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on this because this is going to rapidly keep sucking the heat out of here. In fact... I think we're going to do a quick rotation around here as well. Reason being is I want to cool this place down because, well, the more heat we drain out of here, the better because we do want to rip this out so we can put in the, extend the water tank. What I'm curious to see here is how quickly we can drain the heat out of this section. It's about, what, 1221 here at the very end. Once we start moving some refined carbon through that, that should start to plummet. So 1221. Here comes our first batch of refined carbon. Now that's going to be, uh, it's going to be well cold, so it's not going to be, uh, very useful at the start, but what are we up to? 1100 degrees. Yeah, it's going to start draining the temperature out of this end of the, the magma spike much, much faster. All right, I think that will take care of our water refinement needs for quite some time. Uh, down here, we're just extending this on. All we do is when we uh, push forward a bit more, we uh, build the conveyor bridge and deconstruct the old one. So we just extend on the the rails, deconstruct the old conveyor bridge, and that way the uh, the refined carbon will go on a bit further. And over here, we actually have a conveyor loader that dumps on more refined carbon onto the line. So this thing will keep both of those lines topped up, even if we extend them or not. Though, uh, yes, we will not be expending the one on the right, of course. And that's that. What's the temperature over here like? You're 565, you're 755. So at 565, you should rapidly start to rise now. Five, six, yeah. This method just makes it so much simpler to strip out a magma biome. Anyway. Back to Medilius. Medilius here, we have been, yeah, we're going to try and raise these fish and make them uh, breed like crazy. Wildness wise, we're down to, what are, you, what are you at? 54%? It's going to take about another three or four cycles before they become tame. And once we do, we can start the reproduction process. We're going to run about four of them. We're going to run four of Paku, tame them up, and then expand their population like crazy. For now, the team is uh, catching back up with all the farming that needs doing, which means, um, actually, we should ship over our farmer right about now. One minute while we send them over. I think we've got this whole place set up. I'd forgotten to put in a carbon skimmer. I had uh, blanked that they were going to be in a uh, walking around here without a suit, so they're go we're going to need something to deal with their carbon dioxide. But barring that, the only thing left to do is to tap into this infectious polluted oxygen vent. What we want to do with this infectious polluted oxygen vent is just to filter the uh, polluted oxygen, turn it into clean oxygen, and then dump that straight into the atmosuit docks. Now, last I checked, you can have slime lung germs in an atmos suit dock and it doesn't affect the duplicate using the atmos suit. They don't care that it's got slime lung germs in it. So we're just going to, well, run this through the airflow tiles, run this through some, what do you call it, uh, deodorizers, and then use the oxygen that comes out the other side. 
Uh, from what I can see here, this has a maximum output of 262 grams, and each one of these deodorizers can handle 100 grams per second, which means if we stick th clamp three deodorizers on top, no polluted oxygen should ever get by. Which, yeah, sounds good to me. We're also going to have to put in a whole bunch of sand here, or well, basically drop in all the sand on the map. We don't ever want to have to break back in here again. And we're also going to have to strap a gas pump on top of it to move all the gases. Now we could move the polluted oxygen, filter it somewhere else, and then move it on. No, no, not worth the effort. We're just going to do an all-in-one job here. It is going to have to rip out some of the bam lilies, but we knew that was going to have to happen anyway. This little system here is what we'll be using, uh, well, once we strip out the, uh, the surroundings of the infectious polluted oxygen vent. We'll vacuum this area out, and then any polluted oxygen that comes out of this thing will immediately get filtered. Now it's going to come out at 60C, but well, we don't really care, to be honest. I suppose that that's going to go over here. 60C is not going to stifle any of our crops or cause any problems. It's not even going to hurt our fish. In fact, our fish are already starting to mutate. You'll see we've got our first tropical fry, tropical fry eggs over there. In fact, the chances of a gulp fry coming up have dropped to 1% because all these fish are in warm water. And because they're in warm water, anything above 35C, their chances of becoming tropical fish go up and their chances of becoming gulp fry go down. This is good for us, because those gulp fry could cause us annoyances. Uh, well, that they could cause us annoyances, they, they add complications. We don't want them filtering any of our polluted water in here. And I'd rather not clean all the polluted water, that's just effort. Over here, we're dumping in all of our sand. The sand is going to go in there so it can continue with the, the decontamination of the polluted oxygen. At the same time, we're probably going to have to ship over some more. We've only got about 29 tons of this stuff, which means we'll get about 29 or 26 tons of oxygen, roughly, before we run out of sand. That should be enough to keep one duplicate going for a while, though. Uh, for the time being, I think... Oh, do you hear that? Yeah, that vent should be going off a bit now. You know what? Let's start digging this sucker out. We can take out all of that without actually activating it. And at the same time, I think we can start vacuuming this area out. Uh, wait, no. If the temperature... If the current ambient pressure is above zero degrees, I want you to activate and start pumping. And yes, I would probably need to kick the gas pipe there, wouldn't I? Yeah. All of that is currently just getting dumped over here. We're getting it, we're just dumping it out of the section. We want to turn this whole place into a vacuum. We caught a lucky break, and the infectious polluted oxygen vent has gone dormant. So we'll just have Furious George here have a quick exam of it, just so that we can figure out exactly what we're dealing with. As long as we're getting 100 grams of oxygen a second on average, it's fine. This here works out to about 102 grams of oxygen per second, which is just enough oxygen to keep one duplicate alive. So it turns out our farmer is, is going to survive on that, which, yeah, works for us. Over here, we're going to land the rocket on this side. It's going to bring a giant tank of oxygen with it to help uh, kickstart this place. And that giant tank of oxygen will feed down here, I think. Hmm. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, we, we won't use that rocket for storage. We'll just use these down here. Now, for power, we're going to actually need to juice it up a bit. This thing takes 250 watts to run. And our power is a little bit sketch here. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll pyramid shape the solar panels just so we can squeeze in a few extra ones. This should only take a minute or two, and then we can finally evacuate this planet and leave it to its own devices. That should boost power production by a bit. We won't max out at the 380 like some of the lower ones, but we'll definitely get more power out of each square centimetre of sky we're tapping into. All right, what's left? Last thing we have to do is fire over some phosphorite, just to keep those uh, weasel warts running. I still want to mutate a bunch of these uh, bam lilies into lice lily, or lice mutations, so we might as well have some phosphorite sent over. Now to do that, I've started using the automation system that I probably should have done a long, long time ago. This here is a timer sensor, got introduced a while back, had no idea. And what it does here is it has a green duration and a red duration. So what we set this up to do is don't fire for 60 seconds, and then once every 60 seconds, or for one second out of every 60, turn green. What this means is it uh, turns on this rad bolt generator once for one second out of every 60. And that, that rad bolt gets oop, fired across here and sent over to the launcher. Now the launcher here is being set up to be loaded with phosphorite. It takes about 50 seconds to load it fully, so I've left ourselves a little bit of time, and if you'll watch here, this will get fired over in a second, and poof! Radbolt gets fired across here and gets loaded into the machine. Now one thing to note, there seems to be some sort of bug here. These things have a launch cost of 50 Radbolts, but that's supposed to be per shot. However, it does this weird thing where if it's just finished its cleaning animation, where it's cleaned the rails, it, and it has ten sh or 5 shots in it, as it has, like, this thing can hold a uh, 1000 kilos and change. 
but it can launch five shots in a row without cleaning. So what'll happen here is even though it only has 64 rad bolts, which would only be enough to fire one shot, it's going to fire all five all at once like a machine gun. Yep, there you go, all five launched. And it destroyed, well, it consumed all your rad bolts, but basically it cost us 60 something rad bolts to fire something that should cost us 250. Um, yep, call that a win. And because of this automation, we're literally able to just keep firing phosphorite over just automatically. You'll see here, this is a, this is set up to store phosphorite on a very high priority, so it keeps getting restocked. A little conveyor loader there to load it up. And this thing just keeps firing over again and again and again. How much phosphorite do we have here? 314 tons. Yeah, we'll, we'll fire over about 20 tons and be done with it. It's, uh, it's clear you can actually stack a bunch of shells on top of each other. There is, there is a lot there. <laughs> oh my god, they're giving off a sort of a heat shimmer. That's pretty cool, but we stuck in a second payload opener. We'll let our dupes continue on with that. While that's happening though, we're going to take care of some works back home. This, we're just letting that finish off. It'll empty out that container. Once that storage container is empty, no more phosphorite for the remote island, but over here, we got to extend our water tank. It's getting out of control down here. We, we've actually hit the top and, well, I can't let any of that water go to waste. So we're going to have to extend this up just a little bit higher. I'm thinking up to about there. We'll, we'll still let the rest of it flood into the background of space, but we, we do need to make it just a teensy weensy bit taller. Back on Medillia, it's time to send our construction crew home. Their, their job is to go to the next planet now and uh, terraform that one. We'll come back for the tungsten at some point, but I think for now this has been a rather successful building section. A bunch of plants needs to be harvested, but that's the next duplicates problem. And there, of course, we've got the, the flying puffs in space. Space puffs. It's amazing. All right, uh, I think that's everything done. Perfect. All we really need to do is make sure that the replacement tube can build a oh, an atmosphere uh, station or an atmosphere checkpoint there before they, uh, they get started into this section. So we'll just stop them from going in there. We don't want them getting chlorinated. In the meantime, uh, the rocket is almost full up back here to send that dupe over. It got, what, 8,000 kilos of oxygen? We're going to wait till we've got about 10 before we send them off. And with the construction crew coming back, we should be able to knock this new uh, water tank extension out in no time at all. To help with the immediate problem of us losing water into the background of space, we're going to just do that. All right, that means that any water that can't get out of those vents will be able to flow, overflow a little bit higher. Now we can slowly start saving all this water. I've turned these off as well. I realized we were just, we were dumping water here, wasting so much of this stuff. And we've got a giant tank still left to fill. All hail our glorious new water tank, which should last us all of 10, 10 minutes maybe. I don't know. Ah, Jesus. Well, I've managed to catch up on a bunch of stuff here, namely getting the uh, the all the cargoes unloaded. That took that took a while. Uh, over here, I've got the two rockets ready to go, so we can go to our next planet and Modilius. Yeah, poor Ralph. Poor poor Ralph is working their ass off. Uh, Gas pipes, just a, a couple of modifications here, right there and there, just to make sure we wanted to introduce some gas storage for the uh, polluted oxygen over here. This polluted oxygen keeps coming out and the moment it does, it gets, well, put straight through these uh, deodorizers. The deodorizers turn into clean oxygen, then it gets whisked up by these pipes and sent all the way across here. And if you check in here, you'll notice this oxygen is all clean. Namely because all these oxygen tanks are sitting in uh, chlorine. So any slime lung germs does get cleaned out. I realized we were going to need to do that because eventually we're going to have to start dumping oxygen into this uh, living area. The living area is overpressurized to seven kilos because of past incidents. But uh, at some point we are going to actually have to run an oxygen pipe in here so that the, the duplicate has something to breed. You know what, let's, uh, let's maybe just queue that up now before I forget, just in case. We'll put that there. That, that's it, just in case section. Now down here you'll notice there's some uh, bamelies that haven't been set up. These are uh, lysi leaf or lysi mutations. I'm trying to try to plant uh, bamely lysi mutations that will show up occasionally. We've already got a couple down here, though, oh, god damn it. He hasn't fertilized the plants. I'm letting them sort of slowly catch up and get the skills necessary. Right now their skills are a bit weak sauce. For example, their agricultural skill is at 10, but six of that is from skills. That means they've gained four points in agriculture since they arrived here. Four whole points. They'll, they'll get up to 20 soon enough, but it's gonna, they're going to have to be able to harvest about 30 plants per cycle. That means they're going to need a lot of skills to get up. Plus we, we had them sidetracked a bit. But once they catch up with that, they should be able to fertilize everything and harvest everything in a timely fashion. And over here, oh god, um, right, 
This is our stable tank and it has 50 fish in it. There's 50 of them. Eggs wise, we've only got a, what, 11 there? That's only because these fish just came online recently. You'll see there's still two babies and those two just went from, uh, yeah, that one's seven and that one's 10. So they haven't been adults very long as well. We have so much meat being ch churned out of that. That's all going over here and getting fed to the tree. The tree then spits out its resin. Though, honestly, it's not enough yet. Once we hit about five, 600 critters in our stable tank, we should be uh, churning out an awful lot more food. One common recommendation was to take the eggs and turn the eggs into omelets. We could, but that would mean we'd be eating into our stable supply. This supply should, in theory, just keep growing and growing and growing and never go down because they all lay one egg. They, they hit replacement rate. So we get free meat, basically, up until the point where it starts to lag out the game. At that point, we'll stop. Uh, at the same time, all of the seeds from over here are coming over to this section and it's still running an algae, is it? Yeah, it still hasn't started dipping into the seeds. I think it's going to finish off the algae before it dips into the seeds just automatically. But over here you'll see we've got, uh, where is it, 370 bam lily seeds. Now each seed can feed one fish, well, three fish for one cycle. So that's, yeah, but 300 cycles worth of, of fish feeding? I'm, I'm good with that, of uh, our breeder tank. That's just with Ralph with low skills. You better remember, as their agriculture skill goes up, seeds ch chance goes up as well every time they harvest a plant. We're going to end up with so much seeds, we could have made a massive breeder tank. In fact, we probably could support... Nope, nope. Let's not get into that. We have plans. We have plans today, and the plans is we are going to launch these rockets. These rockets are set to go over to the water planet. I was going to go to the fire planet, but I think I'll leave that one to last. We've already done the fire planet, and I want to explore what... what ta what tato? Watato. Okay, you're Watato now. Perfect. Well, we're going to load up our rockets and we're going to send everyone on their way. What the... Oh, God damn it. Our people have arrived around Watato and it's time for us to land now. Where were we? Uh, was it ejected? Adios? Which one of you has the landing pods? Nope. Dazzling adios. Okay, right. We want you to... Why can't you deploy? So it turns out when we last went on the other planet, I never replaced the trailblazer modules. Uh, so a little bit of a detour back home to replace those trailblazer modules. And uh, now we can we can head back out to Watato again. After what seems like a little bit of a long roundabout journey, we're finally ready to start sending duplicates down. We're going to want to send down Joel and we're going to send down Furious George. Reason being both uh, Joel and actually Chief Multi-Hat, Joel and Chief Multi-Hat, both are wearing Atmos suits. Good idea to send them down, otherwise they might, you know, drown. Question is, where do we deploy them to? Um, hmm. Okay, what tato? Uh, where are we going to send you? I'm thinking over here. Yeah, if we send them over here, we have... What the... Oh, we have to put on ground. Hmm. Yeah, here's some actual material we can dig up to make ladder segments. And actually, it doesn't even matter if they're underwater. They've got Atmo suits on. It's the same as being in a vacuum, realistically. So we'll put one right there. And then we'll have to go immediately right back out and grab the other one. And, Joel, you can land right there. And that is perfect. And did that water dish bulge up? There must be a lot of water down there if the water's bulging up over there. Uh, right. Hop out. Of course, your, your suits glitch out when you come out of those things, so they don't look like they have helmets, but that's fine. We can deconstruct the trailblazer modules, and we can use those to make a rocket launching landing pad to land our rocket ship. And oh my god, that's a deep, deep ocean. Oh my god. Hmm. Let me see, where are we going to put this sucker? I've been looking at this, and I think I have a sneaky idea of something we could do. We could put that rocket pad right there now can you reach it come on yep they can they can both reach it and then if we cancel that oh no all the steel will fall down well that's okay by me you two start digging down you get over here too you also want you to go there come on um ooh, what do you want to do here damn it not what we wanted. Actually, wait, I got an idea. We'll build ourselves a little sandstone tile to prevent this from happening a second time. Come on. All right. Oh, perfect. Now we can... No, 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 no. Get down there, you two. I, I want to make sure you fall. That's the whole point of this. The two of you have to fall so that you can catch back up with that steel. Uh... 
Right, you just teleported. That's, uh... Mm. One moment. We'll just do it this way. Now, now there's nowhere for you to go. Perfect. Whee! Oh, cool. There's the uh, water geyser. And we're going. And, oh, no. There's the steel. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh. No, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, my God. How deep is this? No. 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 Right. Well, there's lime. Uh, I was really hoping we'd land on top of the steel. That was, that was sort of the hope. All right, no, it's not the end of the world. We have, we have enough sandstone and we have enough oxygen that, uh, going to take it. Where? Where? Where did you go, George? <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um... Right, I have no idea what happened there. That, uh, that is odd. That is very, very, very odd. Do I do like the lime stand there? I'm thinking we can go get that steel, though. We can go get that steel. We can definitely go get that steel. We just need to build some... Actually, I know exactly what we need to do. You grab that and deconstruct that. We're going to start building some ladder segments. You see, if we build the ladder segments... Should be a way to get them out onto the end ladder segments, and then once we delete one, there's no way they can magically teleport. Though I do like that they were able to have a look all the way down, do the scouting, and then magically teleport back up there. That was, um, that was really impressive. Yes, I know you're hungry, but don't worry, don't worry. There is a plan. Yeah, just deconstruct that. Perfect. Now there's nowhere to go but down. Now, you're thinking about food now. Come on. Come. <laughs> no teleportation allowed. Come on. How does... It's fine. It's fine. We can we, we can have someone rescue you in a minute. Now we need you to fit right in. Get right, get it, you right about... Ooh, yeah, there. So the rocket can come straight through that section. Could it? Yeah, we can put the... Right there. You, on the other hand, we're going to have to get you to build a ladder. You're, you're going to need to build some sort of ladder system to get out of there. Otherwise, you're in a, an awful lot of trouble. Ah, damn it. Okay, fine. We will... Now, we're going to have to skimp. So, that means every second. That... Hopefully, you don't run out of oxygen before this happens. That would be really bad. And I don't know why I'm doing this, but I thought it would be fun to put a rocket silo in the bottom of the ocean. That's assuming we can still land underwater. Seriously? No. No. Sleep sleep is, is, is not something you are allowed. Oxygen is more important than sleep. We're going to have to put you on your own special schedule. Yep, there's a few warnings on that schedule. The warnings are, there's nothing but work. Now, I better make sure not to uh, leave them on that forever. Joel, yeah, have you finished that? That's a good job. Now, all you have to do is make sure that people can... Get in and out of the rocket, and who are we trying to land here again? It's Dazzling Adeus. Ad can you land here? Please be able to land here. If you can't land here, that could be awkward. There we go. Okay, most bowler landing possible. Let's uh, make that a priority six on those construction commands right there. Where, where are you going, buddy? You're, you're... Okay, there was some sedimentary rock there. That is wonderful. We are uh, going to need some sandstone. Damn it, why are, you, why are you building that out of sedimentary rock? Build it out of sandstone or something. God damn it. That there, and we'll make those all priority sixes. Right, we, we need to get our people in and out of there as quickly as possible. And you can also do that one too. Joel, George, there is no sleep. There is literally no sleep. You are just going to work like crazy until we've got Chief Multi-Hat out of here. Them and their shimmy sideways shuffle. I don't know. They must be in a dancer in a previous life or something. That was just... I don't know how they managed that. They sort of just sort of like hit that one. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, where are you? Almost done. Almost done. And is that... I think there's polluted waste. Oh, the polluted waste from the rocket. Yes, every time the rocket lands, it gives off polluted uh, nuclear waste. 
This is going to be a bit odd, though, because we're underwater, which means we can't really build any of the machines necessary. I probably should have thought through that a little bit better. Maybe we can drill down here, because we do need to get down to the point where we can... Or we do need oxygen so that... Or an oxygenated area like this, where we can put in this suit refurbishment, so we can refurbish our suits. Uh, otherwise, eventually, this will run out. Uh, we also need to... Oh, wow. Uh, we also need to find another place to land the second rocket. Hmm. Are we going to need to dig up and chuck that out, or can it actually land straight through that? Hmm. You know what? We might find that out in a minute. We might put another one here and see if we can. But first, though, Chief Multi-Hat needs rescuing. Come on. Perfect. Well, they didn't die. How much oxygen you got left in that suit, buddy? Uh, I can't tell, but you are going straight up into the rocket, probably to grab a snack. I do not blame you. How's your calories looking? Yeah, looking good. Stress is 13%. Calories, 2,900. Perfect. Let's put you back on normal schedules. Well, I am out of time. I went way over budget on my time for this one again, of course, because, yeah, this, this, this looks like an awesome map. If it wasn't for the fact that there's so much water, I have no idea what we're going to do with it all. We can't even fire this back home. As well as that, down here we've got lime... And fossil, and I think there was some graphite down here. I saw. Was I? Was was I? Did I imagine that? But I could have sworn I saw some graphite down in this section. No, oh, there we go. Yeah, we've got graphite and so much lime. That's going to make so much steel. All right. I think what we're going to do though is, well, we are going to put a second rocket silo right here. Land our second rocket. If we have to dig this out first, so be it. Or if it can land straight through it and crush it all, that would also be hilarious. But I think, I think this is going to be our new project. I'm not sure exactly what we want to do with all of this, though. That's so much water. We can't even ship it back home. We don't have space. We need a second water tank just to store all the water from this planet. Or maybe we just turn this planet into another water tank. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out the next episode. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.